At church one morning, there was a little girl named Jane who had listened uh, to a sermon called Let Your Light Shine. And the only part she remembered um, was the scripture text that the preacher had read before the sermon. And, but she didn't understand really what it meant. So she asked her mom, and her mom explained to her, letting your light shine means being good and obedient and cheerful. And that afternoon, there was a little bit of trouble in the nursery. Um, and so Jane, in trying to excuse herself, said to the nursery worker, I'm sorry I was naughty. I blowed myself out. This morning, we're continuing in our sermon series called Lessons from the Toy Box. We are in the sixth week of looking at some classic children's toys and lessons we can learn from them. Videos of all of the um, sermon series in the series are up on our website in case you've missed any of them and want to know about the toys we've talked about. Today's toy is the Light Bright, which I have right, oh, sorry, I forget that's there, right here, oh, okay. But you only get to look at the back of it for a little while. This is a light bright. Anybody remember these? This one was found in Judy and Wayne Sutter's basement, and it's from 1979. And it still works, which is a miracle of God. So if you don't remember, this little light bright box was first released by Hasbro in 1967, and it really has remained relatively unchanged. Uh, as opposed to some other toys we've used. It's basically a light box with a piece of black paper that covers one side, the side you can't see right now, and you take these little plastic pegs of different colors and push them through the black paper. And then when you turn the light on, the black paper blocks out all the light except where the colored pegs are, so you can see your design, your neat little picture that you've put together. Now, over the years, they've released a cube version, which is smaller than the original, and you can create pictures on all four sides. There's a flat screen version that is a bit thinner than the original design. On Amazon, you can buy the original Judy for $245. I'm just saying, $245. <laughs> But, the, I mean, they've changed a little bit, but the basic, the other one is $19.99. I priced it, just in case anybody wants a new one. The basic principle is the same, though. The light reveals the picture made with the little plastic pegs. There are lots of scripture passages that talk about light and darkness. The very beginning of our scripture in the book of Genesis opens with God speaking light into the darkness. And we see those themes continue all the way through to the end of the Bible in the book of Revelation. We are still hearing about light, the light that shines in the city of God. Throughout both the Old and New Testaments runs this image of light and darkness, weaving its way through the story of the people of God and their life with God. The Israelites are told that they will be a light to the nations. The prologue of John's Gospel talks about Jesus being the life that is the life of all men. It says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. But the passage of scripture we're studying this morning comes from the Gospel according to Matthew. It's from chapter 5, a section known as the Sermon on the Mount, which is a teaching section within the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus is with his disciples and many others who've gathered around to be taught. And right after Jesus gives the Beatitudes, he says this, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Jesus tells the disciples that as his disciples, they are the light of the world. Notice he does not say you ought to be the light of the world, or if you try really hard, you will be the light of the world. Jesus says you are the light of the world. You are already the light of the world. The disciples already use their light to point to God. Their light, he says, is as impossible to hide as a city on a hill. Now that image of a city on a hill is probably not as powerful for us as it would have been for the original hearers in Jesus' time. With all of our light pollutions and tall buildings standing in our way, it's hard for us to imagine what a city on a hill in an otherwise dark sky might look like. I was um, trying to learn a little bit of science this week because I didn't learn it when I was in school. 
And so I, uh, there's a, a website called LiveScience.com, and it explains it this way. It says, the Earth's surface curves out of sight at a distance of 3.1 miles, but our visual acuity extends far beyond the horizon. They said if the Earth was flat, or if you were standing on top of a mountain surveying a larger than usual patch of the planet, you can perceive bright lights hundreds of miles in the distance. On a dark night, you could even see a candle flame flickering up to 30 miles away. Isn't that incredible? I mean, we can't do that anymore because there's lights everywhere. It's hard to see a candle flickering 30 miles away. So I want you to imagine for a moment a completely dark field as far as you can see, except for a city up on a hill. Can you imagine how your eyes would be automatically pulled to that light in the midst of the darkness? It would be difficult to look away from that light. And that's what Jesus says the disciples are. They are as bright as a city on a hill. They are the place where people's eyes are naturally drawn. But the point of that light isn't for the disciples to be the center of attention. They are the light of the world, it says, not the center of it. As the New Interpreter's Bible Commentary reminds us, the primary function of light is not to be seen, but to let things be seen as they are. Think about a lighthouse, for example. People didn't go through all the difficulty and expense and work of building and then constantly maintaining and manning a lighthouse simply to be able to look at a quaint building or a pretty light. You could do that in other places in easier ways. Lighthouses served a purpose. They help ships know where the land is and help illuminate some of the rocks that are in the water. The point of a lighthouse is to help people see what is already there. Or think about a candle. Mostly nowadays we use candles to set the mood or because we like the way they smell. We rarely actually use them for their real purpose. But candles were originally invented to shine light so that you could see what was already around you. A bit like we use flashlights today. We don't usually turn on a flashlight and then just set it up in a corner and leave it there because we think it looks pretty cool. We use a flashlight, or in my case my cell phone, when we are somewhere dark and need to see what we're doing. Jesus says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. The point is not for people to see the disciples or to see us, but rather to see God. The disciples' faithfulness, our faithfulness, is like a light that shines on God's work in the world, on God's love for God's people. Think about our toy again for a second. The light in the light bright toy is a fundamental part of the toy. I can tell you from experience that the toy is not nearly as fun without the light. Once the light bulb burns out, the toy is a dud. But the light by itself isn't the point either. It's not very fun to just stare at a bare light bulb. I've never done that, but I don't think it would be very exciting. The point of the light bright is to use the light to illuminate the picture. Both pieces are important. The light enables us to see the fullness of the picture that you've created. It's the same for us. The New Interpreter's Bible Commentary says it this way, the disciples are called to the active mission of letting their light shine to all, but they do not generate the light any more than salt generates its own saltiness. The metaphors picture the church as having been lit, recipients of a light from which God is the source. They have been lit not for their own sake, but for the sake of the world. God is the source of the light. The light shines through the disciples and acts to illuminate the work of God that is already in the world. The light draws people closer to God. Just like the light in the light bright helps us to see the picture, the disciples help the world to see God better. And by doing so, to draw the rest of the world into a closer relationship with God. And here's the thing. This isn't simply about trying harder or letting our light shine through sheer willpower. Jesus says you are the light of the world. This is about actually believing what Jesus says and then learning to live out the new reality it has already created in the call to discipleship. Leonard Sweet, a theologian, says it this way, the light of Jesus lets us see what we could be, what God is calling us to be, what is completely transformable in our lives. Maybe that's what Jesus is trying to show us in the rest of the Sermon on the Mount. 
that when we accept that we are the light of the world, we'll be so slow to anger that even being angry with someone and calling them names will seem violent to us. When we believe that we are the light of the world, we'll be quick to forgive and reconcile with others. We'll learn to turn the other cheek and walk the second mile. We'll be able to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. We'll be generous not for recognition, but because that's who we were created to be. We'll discover that we can't serve both God and money and that we can't add a single day to our lives by worrying. That's the vision Jesus lays out for his disciples when he tells them, you are the light of the world. He points them towards a reality in which even we can be patient and forgiving, seeking transformation rather than retribution, generous and self-giving, faithfulness, being able to keep even our simplest words and most complicated oaths. A reality in which we trust in God's provision and refrain from judging others. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus helps us to see what is transformable, what is changeable, what is possible in our lives when we believe what he says. He helps us to realize that we don't have to live this way. Like the picture on the light bright, it's always transformable. It's always changeable. Where we put the pegs make a difference. It changes where the light comes through and therefore the image we see. When we let God transform us, the picture of our lives changes for people to see. In my hometown in Southern Maryland, there's a, a museum which is really excellent called the Calvert Marine Museum. If you're ever in Southern Maryland, they have um, sea otters named Bubbles and I always forget the other one, but I love the name Bubbles, so I remember that one, but it's a great museum. And uh, as part of the museum, they have an old lighthouse that used to sit in Cove Point, helping ships to stay away from the coastline uh, there in Solomons in Southern Maryland. But now it sits um, right in the, in the harbor at Solomons Island. It's still in the water, but it's not near where any ships are going to be coming through, and it's not in very deep water. It's set up as it would have been uh, by one of the longtime families that occupied it years and years ago. And you can go in the lighthouse and walk around the bedrooms and see the tiny little kitchen and wonder how they ever got anything done in there. You can walk up the same steps that they used to walk up, and the light still works. You can climb to the top to see it, but all of the mirrors are covered, and the mechanism that helped the light to shine outside of the lighthouse no longer functions. You can turn the light in, uh, on and off, but it doesn't go outside of the lighthouse. It's pretty, it's a beautiful um, lighthouse, but it doesn't serve much of its original purpose anymore. I think we have a choice. We can choose to be like the Lighthouse Museum. We can hide who we are, be like the black piece of paper that covers the light bright. But if our mirrors aren't working and the mechanism that helps us to shine out is covered, then our light is useless. Or we can make another choice. Can you turn the lights off, please? because you can't see the light bright without the lights being off. Or we can make another choice. Our secretary did that for us. It looks good, doesn't it? We can choose to be like the light. We can choose to be as we were designed to be, to shine out and to use our light to point to the one who created us to help people see that which already is going on in the world, God working and moving and transforming and changing us. We can let our light shine because you are the light of the world. What will you choose? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.